Now to our East Africa correspondent, my colleague Sarah Kimani. Sarah, I mean, you are one of those who are reporting on this matter from very early on. Let's just start with what we know now. There seemed to be a bit of confusion as to whether or not there was a queue and what was uh, the whereabouts of the Prime Minister. Well, uh, indeed, a military takeover has happened in uh, Sudan. And what we know now is that uh, the leader of the military faction of the transitional council, which is the transitional government inside uh, Sudan, has said that the government has been dissolved and that uh, uh, Prime Minister Hamdok is being held uh, because he refused earlier in the day uh, to agree to the takeover of the government. Now, on the streets of Khartoum, what we know is that uh, protests are underway with people saying that they will not allow a return uh, to military rule. Now this is going to be a protracted battle as we know because uh, previously in 2019 uh, citizens uh, civilians spent days on the streets and just when they were about to win the military took over and you know took over the control of the government and that is when a civilian and military government was formed. Now this was supposed to hand over power to a civilian government in 2023 after uh, you know, reforms of the constitution, reforms of the administration in, in Sudan, and general reforms that would have led to uh, an election uh, in 2023. Now, all that seems on hold. Hmm. And of course, uh, there was another failed coup in the past couple of weeks. And it's a very pivotal time that this happens because we know that the military was supposed to hand the leadership of the council that runs the country over to civilians. Yes, indeed. Uh, in September, that is just last month, on the 21st uh, of last month, uh, there was an attempted coup. Uh, Pres Prime Minister Hamdok's administration was able to foil that. But since then, uh, the military and the civilian uh, wing of the Transitional Council has, have, has been having altercations and have been unable to come uh, together again. And so that now has, this is the climax of those altercations. Now, the Sudan's professional association, which is the one that led the resolution last time, has called people onto the streets. Indeed, uh, several unions are already uh, stopping work and are leading civil disobedience. We do not know if that will uh, le lead to the military, you know, ceding power back to civilians or, you know, letting guard down. It's guard down because they already are in charge of the uh, broadcasting services, the national broadcaster in Sudan. And we understand there has been chaos in Omdurman, that is one of the main uh, areas, uh, the centers of previous revolutions. Mm, and not the only that, as you uh, say, Sarah, the protesters on the streets and those who are leading those protests, including uh, the uh, forces of freedom and change, for instance, are reportedly saying there are already some deaths who are casualties from the recent protests. Have you heard any of this? What is the security situation like? Well, uh, there is tension, but it is also very difficult to tell what exactly is happening because telecommunications uh, have been uh, disconnected. We are not able to communicate. Early in the morning when I tweeted at about uh, a quarter to six uh, East African time, we were still able to communicate with journalists inside uh, Sudan, but that has now stopped because we are not able uh, to get uh, communications. Internet has been disconnected. Telecommunications has been disconnected. But earlier I spoke to somebody uh, who was part of the Sudan's uh, professional association who is in London and who was telling me that uh, the army has tried to have a pushback in Omdurman and there are uh, unconfirmed reports of deaths. At this point I cannot be able to confirm indeed if anybody has lost their lives but protests are underway and of course we understand the military is trying to push back those protests. And of course, uh, we'll keep on getting the latest uh, from you. Sarah Kimani, our East Africa correspondent on the latest uh, in the Sudan. As you've heard, the AU has condemned the illegal takeover of power, demanding that consultations continue.